Yes. Once and for all, 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 Break it down, pull in these scriptures, let me show you how to break it down. Break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. If you pull in that scripture, you need to break it down. Break it down, break it down, break it down, pull in these scriptures, let me show you how to break it down. Break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. If you pull in that scripture, you need to break it down. Break, break, break it down. Yo, I guess let's get this thing going. We are going to discuss. Robin Hood is an investing oh, app that can buy and sell. going to put my music on. So I'm a professional. Sorry. All right. So anyway. I don't care about being professional, I care about getting the word through, I care about breaking it down. Um, so, are Christians gambling with God? <laughs> and is it worth the reward? That's what we're going to um, dig into. And let's see, start out in Isaiah 66. We're going to go over some scriptures about God's attitude. So, um, we have Isaiah 66, and we're going to read, um, Thus saith the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me, and what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made, and so all these things come to be, declares the Lord. But this is the who, the one to whom I look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. God wants us to um, be very humble, contrite in spirit. Um, it's like a sense of contrite. It's like a sense of um, sense of fear um, and trembles at, at his word. So, um, take his word seriously. Let me just look up contract for you real quick, just to be sure, because you notice he says contract and tremble. Um, and again, you know, like I said, see, expressing or uh, feeling remorse or penance. Penance. I don't know what that is. Penful. So, um, when. Um, we need to be humble, remorseful, and tremble at his word. So, and the reason why um, I'm bringing that up is because we have people that are, um, that when they just, they're like, oh, well, I'm satisfied, I'm, I'm content with what I believe, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's just based on themselves, and their selfishness in a sense where they just won't allow for any other interpretation of things or some new understanding and uh, so you know to me that's not humble that's not contrite or um, that's not trembling uh, when God's word is being brought to you no matter what it is if you disagree you got to be humble and just try to uh, work it out and see what's up um, so we're going to start in second, um, or we're going to keep it going in Second Thessalonians. Other verse to look at, chapter 2, verses 9 and 11, 9 through 11. We're reading in the ESV. Um, we have, the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. Wow. 
Again, you need to be contrite, humble, and tremble at his word. Um, if something is not true and you refuse the truth, no matter what it is, you you are you could be given a strong delusion. You could you could be um, just to believe what you believe, and you have got to take that into consideration. So again, we're moving on. We're talking about God's attitude right now, and um, these are just points that we need to look at, that we need to consider. So when somebody comes at you with different doctrine or new understanding, we shouldn't just knock it off. We shouldn't just um, be like, oh no, I like what I believe. You know, be humble, be contrite and remorseful and, and tremble at his word and, um, and, and try to gain some understanding. Because uh, you never know. You better pray to God that you're not under his delusion. That's for sure. Um, let's go to book of Matthew. Chapter 22, verses 14. Um, we can start at 13. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. You know, again, you got to be careful. Don't just go with, you know, if something is the most popular thing or if popular views. I'm not saying popular views are necessarily wrong, but if something's popular, that doesn't make it the correct thing. So we got to be careful to discern that. Um, because many are called and few are chosen. So, um, you know, again, we taking all these scriptures and trying to gain an understanding of God's attitude, taking him seriously. Um, moving on to uh, Matthew uh, 22, um, 24, actually. Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 24, verses 13. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now, when it was evening, 24, 13, oh, 14. I wonder why it's tweaking. I'm tweaking. 24. 13. Somebody probably caught that early and was like, this guy's reading the wrong package. Passage. Tweaking. Alright. Um, and because lawlessness and uh, we're starting at 12, Matthew 24 verses 12 and 13. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Um, remember, love has many aspects, not just being nice. It's not just, I mean, although people may be as such, but the love, uh, to love God is to follow his commandments. So even that could be part of the great falling away, that people are falling away from God's love. But moving on, um... But the one who endures for uh, to the end will be saved. Um, um, so, for me, is to point that out is just to show um, how how you have to endure, how you have to fight the good fight, and and keep it moving. You know, you have to always grow. You can't just don't be content. I don't think there's any scripture that wants us to be just content with something. Always challenging ourselves, always seeking wisdom. Uh, moving on, uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 22. Starting at 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does 
the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not do this, did we not do that? Do not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Um, this is early on in the chapter of, um, of Matthew, and he's um, and he, and Christ is still out there in his ministry. Um, so this is going to um, lead into our uh, the third part uh, showing how we need to take heed to the, to the law and and just take it seriously be contrite and humble and understand gain some understanding um, again not everyone who says Lord not everybody that's a Christian is gonna make it and um, many people doing mighty works, doing things in their name they, they think and they're saved so you know again we got to take these things into consideration um, another one in Matthew 13. Oh my gosh, got an ad again. What is going on here? It's alright, guys. Uncut. We got ads in here. 13, Matthew 13 24. Fourth, Matthew 13, 24 to 30. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and, and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the seed, the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him master did you not know did you not sow good seed in your field how then does it have weeds he said to them an enemy has done this so the servants said to him um, then do you want us to go and gather them but he said no lest it gathering the weeds um, you root up the, the weeds you root of the wheat along with them um, let both grow together until the harvest and the harvest time will tell the reapers at the harvest time I will tell the reapers gather the weeds from first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn um, so again we have Christ or God allowing the evil or the perishing to grow with the wheat the good people and then he will separate them so again here we go I mean take all this into consideration understand what's going on here and you know again many will say to him and we gotta endure to the end many call few chosen God sends delusions you've got to we've got to take this seriously and really make sure we are understanding God's work correctly um, because you know people are again when their views differ they're just like eh well we differ you know they just want to agree to disagree and and because they just stuck in their mindset and, and they don't want to have a new mindset that's why you know even when you try to talk to people and challenge them they don't even want to discuss it they're just like oh well, I'm content I'm good I, I'm, I'm fine with what I believe so far all right, that's leaning on your own understanding. What we get to later, um, Romans eleven verses eight. Start at um, seven. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a, steer, a spirit of stupor, and eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day um, so the reason why I was pointing that at oh yeah we'll continue and David says let their table become a snare and a, and a trap and a, a stumbling block and a rep, uh, 
retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and bend their backs forever. So, this is consistent with how God works sometimes. He just allows people to be in their, um, in their ignorance, to be blind, to, to not understand. Um, and uh, we have a verse... What is it? Um, um, the yeah, the parables where Christ is talking about how the reason, part of the reason why he speaks in parables is because seeing they may not see and hearing they may not hear, lest they turn and be healed. Basic God was basically telling these people that he speaks things in parables because. He doesn't want people to understand. He doesn't want them to see so that he can heal them. People are meant to be lost. Some people are just going to be lost. And we don't want that. And it's not because God chooses that. It's because of your attitude. And God allows you to be in your, in your ignorance. If you're going to continue that, be humble, be contrite, and tremble at his word. Um... Last one as far as right now and dealing with God's attitude. Um, Luke six thirty nine. Luke chapter six thirty nine. Um and he also told them this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? Alright. Um, you. Understand it. Now, I really hope not. And I think God does have grace. But for the most part I think this is exactly what he's saying. If you are led by the blind. You're going to fall into the pit too. And the pit is hell. So, don't allow these people to 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 wound you. You gotta be discerning. This is why I have this channel. We are sheep. We have work to do. We must discern our teachers. So, pay attention to what's going on. Don't allow these blind guys to blunt, to to um to follow to guide you because you may fall in the pit as well. Um, and that's the key right there is, is the fact that if you're under a wrong teacher or something like that, you may also fall into the pit. Whether or not you think your teacher's blind, whatever. Let's move on to our duty. Starting in Proverbs 2 4. It says, We'll start from one. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, make your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. If you seek like silver and search for it as treasure, search for it as for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of God. Okay, we must seek it like treasure to make sure we understand Yahweh and find the knowledge of Yah. Treasure ain't easy to find, baby. Let's move on to all right. Um, yeah, let's move on to uh, I'm sorry, Second Timothy two fifteen. I am always going to be challenged. Anybody that wants to debate me or talk to me, that's fine. Let's do it. I hope I'm wrong. Cause if I'm wrong then I learn and I gain understanding. That's what we need. I'm ready to change my mind. Not the same as being double-minded. There's a difference. 
uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Another version says in the King James Version, it says, study to show thyself approved. We've got to study. We've got to study to show ourselves approved. So God has mercy on us. This is our duty. Alright? This is what we're jumping into right now. We're jumping into our duty as man. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16, a very popular passage. Um... All scripture, mind you, New Testament not around at this time. All scripture, and even if it was, it says all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We may have some things to teach you from the Old Testament. And you can't, you need to be contrite and humble and tremble at word, God's word to, to see if that is to be true. And some people are just so resistant that they, they're not, they're not being humble. And this is why I point this out, all scripture, even Paul thought so. Um, this is a great passage right here in uh, Acts because uh, we we definitely are lacking some of this because people are ready to jump at, at, at the um, jump at that that gospel love deception that I, I talked about in that other video um, it's all about love grace and being led by the spirit but there is a deception going on uh, as well and this is what we need to be doing the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by, uh, I'm sorry, Acts 17, verses 10. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away tonight, away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if the things were so. Okay. These Jews were more noble, more respectable, more honorable than those in Thessalonica because they received the word of God with all eagerness to examine the scriptures or eagerness and examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. We're making sure it's correct. That's our sheep work right there. We are called to be Bereans. Alright. Um, and let's do another one in uh, Philippians. This is uh, kind of one that we already went over. Um, give me one second, baby. So, or the verse is similar. So, Philippians, uh, sorry, uh, Philippians 2.12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. God looks on those who are humble, contrite, and tremble at God's word. This is what we need to be doing. Get your ego out the way. Get your contentment out the way. Oh, I'm okay with this. You're okay. All I hear is I am. I am this. Not this. Well, this is what this says. You're inconsistent. We're being inconsistent. Because people are ready to argue all types of things. But as soon as they come to something they can't deal with, oh no, they ain't ready for that. 
Proverbs 3 verses 5. Trust in Yah with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. So I don't want to hear anybody tell me something doesn't make sense to them. Because that's not, and I don't care if it makes sense to you. That's not what it's about. As long as it's logical. It doesn't need to make sense to you, that which makes it true. Absolutely not. Um, so now we're going to go into some things that show how the law is relevant. Because, again, are you gambling with God? Or, and is the, is the reward worth the risk? Or is the risk worth the reward? <laughs> you know, and, and that's what we're going through right now. So, what did, we already, we're, we went over our duty as men as far as how, how we address God's word. We dealt with God's attitude. And now we're going to go into how the law is relevant. Now let's start off in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 13. All right, let's start at um, chapter 12. My son, beware of anything beyond these, of making many books there is no end, and much study is weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Are you still a man? I keep looking over here. Are you still a man? <laughs> Tweaking. Yes, this is our duty. Fear God and keep his commandments. Alright? Deuteronomy 8 and 2. Starting at verse 1, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in the poss possesses the land that Yah swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that Yah, gave, your God, has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna. Alright, what happened? God tested you to know what was in your heart. To see if you would keep his commandments or not. God tests us to see, see if we'll, and his commandments are a test. To see if we want to obey him. Because as we see, his commandments leads us to not lean on our own understanding. Because sometimes things don't con fully coincide with the way we understand things okay um, let's go to Matthew let's go in line here still dealing with how the law is relevant Matthew 5 oh yeah Verses 17, 17 through 20. As After Christ is already speaking, talking to these people, talking to the Jews. This is Matthew 5, literally the beginning of his ministry. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law. Don't even think about it. As soon as he started talking, he knew what they were thinking. Don't think that I come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And fulfill does not mean do away with. That is retarded. That, that the fact that you think that he said I came not to abolish, but to abolish, that doesn't even make sense. Fulfill, he didn't even fulfill it for one, and for two, fulfill just means to fulfill something, to make it complete. That doesn't mean something else was done away with it. It completed it. Which means you still need to not dress as a man if you're a woman, or likewise. But that's not in the New Testament. Forgot about that. Moving on to Matthew 19. Therefore, whoever relaxes the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And least does not mean necessarily that, oh, you just got the lowest position. You ain't getting no lease than hell. You're going to hell. If you're teaching people against the law. This is at the beginning of his ministry. And this is a perfect scripture to go after. Because this is what people are doing right now. 
Matthew 11 and 6. All right. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Or blessed is the one who does not stumble because of me. We have that in other um, uh, versions as well. I'll pull up another one just to make sure. Uh, or just to show you guys. I, I don't know for a fact it does. Um, let's go to the new international version. The 11.6. Do not stumble on account of me. Okay. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Who doesn't, doesn't get all mixed up. Even if you want to say, oh, the Jews, that was the Pharisees. Yeah, they're, they're still getting mixed up. They're still not understanding the Mashiach came to to uh, fulfill his purpose. And he's still not getting away with the law. You still have got to um, keep his commandments. I said this from the jump. Don't stumble on him. Just like Christians. Stumbling thinking that Jesus did away with the law. You stumbled because you, you, you not, you, you were confused. You or you, um, you're not understanding correctly, and that's going to cause you to stumble. Um, let's go to Second Peter three thirty one. No, three sixteen. Actually. Go to Romans. Romans three thirty one. Start at three thirty. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith, Christ, do we then nullify the word the law by his by this faith? By this faith in Christ? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. We we make it stand. We keep it going. That's what uphold means. We establish the law. That's what establish means. Okay? Um, again, since there is only one God, and who, who will justify the circumcised by faith, and the uncircumcised through faith, the same faith, because, again, the circumcised was us, the Israelites, and the uncircumcised was the Gentiles. And how were they going to be saved? The same faith. Who, what faith? Christ Jesus. Do we then make the, nullify the law by this faith? Absolutely not. That doesn't make any sense. Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. We make it stand. We have got to get that together. Last one. It's your favorite homie, Paul. Let's go to Paul. They tried to go to Paul to misconstrue his his uh, teachings. And I can't wait to just do a whole series on Paul. It's going to be ridiculous. Romans 2.13. Start at 12. All who sin apart, because look, this is another one they misconstrue. Romans 2. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. And all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. You see? You're under the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be, decla who will be declared righteous. Hold on, wait. The, me trying to do the law If I break one law I break all of them And I'm cursed I'm damned Misconstrued You're always, People are misconstruing Paul's letters Because this wouldn't make any sense Why would he tell people The doers of the law Come on man Alright That's the last one Second Peter 316 back to Peter. Second Peter 316. 
Um, actually, no, I don't need this one. Um, um, I guess yeah, it, it is relevant because, um, again, we have Paul who was a law abider. Peter says he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking to them in these matters. His letters contain things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort. Unstable because you will not continue to sort these things out. You just, you can't deal with it. Um, um, hard to understand. I'm just, um, think about that. When you read Paul on the surface level, that's what it looks like. It looks like he's thrown away the law. This is why people say he's a false prophet. This is why Christians say, oh, he did away with the law. No, absolutely not. He's not a false prophet, and he did not do away with the law. You just don't understand what he's talking about. Because these things are hard to understand. And that's why other Jews, even in that, um, in that time, in Acts 21, um accused him of teaching against the law because they didn't understand and they do what they distort to um as they do the other scriptures because it's like the only scripture to their own destruction and again lawlessness that i mean do you not see the pattern um christ uh upheld the law, kept the law, tells people to um, follow Moses, um, says he does not come to get away with the law. Paul's writings are misunderstood, as Peter said, but yet you you always go to Paul to dismiss Christ? That doesn't make sense. Or the law. And then he has the only, he's the letter with the only warning that says if you, uh, the people distort it to their own destruction. And many will say to me, Lord, Lord, and, and then Christ says, I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. Come on, guys, put two and two together. And um, and just as a as a note, Dr. Brown, Dr. Michael Brown, a uh, scholar, and other scholars I've heard, agree that Paul, they uh, disagree with my position for the law, but they agree that Paul followed the law. Paul followed the law, and... And I had, had to bring that up because we got some people saying that Paul didn't follow the law. And that's not true. Um, and let's go to... Alright. Now, we established God's attitude, our duty, and then the law. Now... Again, we have scholars that say that it's okay to follow the law. Okay, and this is the kicker. They say it's okay. If you think it's okay, it's okay. Um, but then on the other side, you have people that say, uh, if you don't follow the law, you go to hell. And we have scripture that seems to back that up. So, is the risk worth the reward? It Again, you don't, you're not risking anything if you're following the law. If you're trying to follow the law, you're not risking anything. Um, but if you... If you... Um, if you do not follow the law, you're risking. You're gambling on your faith. Because you don't, you really don't know if you have to follow the law. You don't. But you're going to gamble that. Even though you could be on the safe side over here. Just like you know for a fact you can't. I mean why would you even gamble that? This is why we're jumping into the rewards. Give me one second. I'm sorry guys. Sorry guys. And we're getting into the reward. Um... So this is your reward. If you're wrong, this is your reward. I remember when I speak to atheists. Okay, if I die, and you're right, then, okay, we both die. Wow. If you die, or if we both die, and I'm right, then you're, you're screwed. Is the risk worth the reward, and are you gambling with God? Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. 
Work out your faith in fear and trembling. I'm scared to go to hell. I'm not trying to. So I'd rather be on the safe side. So we're going to stop. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 9. Okay. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't think that that means your love gospel, because there's more to it than that. Don't get misconstrued. You gotta understand things before you just jump into what words mean or phrases. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of God, of the Lord, and from the glory of His might. You will be shut out from His presence. That's your reward. You want to risk that? No more presence of no more of God's presence continuing to Matthew Matthew mm, 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 Matthew 13 Matthew 13 50 ooh wee, yeah Matthew 13 50 Matthew 13 uh, 49 this is how it will be at the end of the age the angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth Ugh, it's gonna be so grievous blazing fire you know how it hurts just a burn just a burn on your finger you can't stand it you wanna burn. you wanna risk burning your whole body that is ridiculous People need to be humble and contrite and tremble at God's word. And if you're waving this off right now, that's because you're not humble. You're not trite, you're not contrite, and you're not being you're you're not trembling. Last verse. Um, Matthew chapter 25, verses 30. We're starting at 29 for whoever has will be given more and they have an abundance whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless serpent outside into the darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so are you willing to risk are you gambling why are you gambling so against the law to gamble but don't risk being out of the presence of God, being thrown in a blazing furnace, and thrown to the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth because you can't stand it, is the risk worth the reward? Stop gambling with God. All right, my brothers and sisters, shalom. I appreciate you guys. Subscribe, check me out. And let me know your feedback. Yes! Once and for all, once and for all, I don't, I'm sitting here thinking, the B cartel. Why don't, why don't we just simply break this thing down? This thing down. Break it down! Break it down! Break it down! Pull in these scriptures, let me show you how to break it down! 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 Break it